Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to make this wavy car animation that I posted a few days ago on my Instagram. Uh, it's a super simple technique, but I thought it might be interesting to just share how I made it. Let's check it out. Okay, so we've got the car here in Cinema 4D, and the first thing we're going to do is create a formula spline. And this is going to be the spline that the car is going to follow along. So um, just based on the size of the car, I figured out that it would be 350 in the X. So just replace that number uh, that was 100 with 350, and in the Y replace the 100 with 50. So that's, uh, if you look from the side, that's a nice, uh, you know, wide kind of curve that the car uh, won't get too distorted, but, you know, we kind of want some of that distortion. So um, next thing we're going to do is select the uh, null that the, the Volkswagen car is in and hold shift and we'll click on spline wrap. And that'll automatically fit the, the spline wrap deformer to the car because of all the children of that null. So um, let's go ahead and throw the formula into the spline. And now we've got a super long stretched out car um, and it's going actually in the wrong direction. As you can see, it's rotated 90 degrees. So first, instead of um, in the spline wrap deformer, instead of the mode being fit spline, which basically stretches the mesh from the first point to the last point of the spline, we're gonna change that to keep length. So it'll actually keep the length of the uh, car. So um, next, we're gonna grab the spline wrap and grab the rotate tool and we're gonna rotate this negative 90 degrees. So you can see now it's facing the correct way. Okay, so we want this car to basically sit um, on top of this spline you can see here. So what we need to do, we can't actually move the uh, spline wrap deformer uh, because it's basically, the bounding box is parented to the geometry. So what we have to do is go down into the, in the spline wrap deformer, go down to this bounding box tab, and we're gonna offset the, the Z position downward so that the uh, center point of this, uh, this line in the spline wrap deformer is actually aligned with the bottom of our uh, car. So if we go into the side view, this will be a little easier to see. And if we just start um, moving this up until right about there, now you can see our tires are just touching the uh, spline. So when we create the surface on which the car will move, that will be uh, a lot better because we have, I think if we just set this to zero, it'll be exactly at the uh, zero point of the, the bottom of the tires. Cool, so now let's jump back out. And um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe two things. So we're gonna have uh, basically two keyframes to create this entire animation. So first we're gonna keyframe this spline, and then second we're gonna keyframe the offset of the spline wrap deformer on the car. So before we do that, I wanna make this, give this spline a few more samples. You can kinda see it's a little choppy here. So I'm gonna do, um, 360 samples so it's nice and smooth and then just change it to cubic interpolation so it smooths out those intermediate points. And then um, we need to keyframe it to have the same start and end position so I'm actually going to um, decrease or increase the T max to 2 so we can start um, sort of in the same position that we end. Basically if you look at this what we want is our spline to um, essentially be moving backwards because the car is actually gonna stay stationary and it's just gonna look like it's moving forward and the camera will look like it's tracking with it. So um, this is actually the position of our spline that we wanna have at the last keyframe. So if we go forward to frame 100, we can set a keyframe on the X for the formula spline. Um, and then let's go into the side view so this is a little easier. Um, and I also hid the spline wrap just so that's not in our way. Um, and then if we go forward or go backwards to frame zero, um, Basically, we want the spline right here to be in the same position that the spline right here is because those are the same, uh, essentially the same part of the formula here. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this forward. See, 350 is the length of each uh, wave. So we actually wanna double that. So we're gonna go up to 700 uh, in the X. So we're gonna go negative 700 in the X and then zero, right? Okay, um, and then I'm going to go into the curve editor 
and I'm just going to set these to be linear keyframes. So it's just a nice consistent movement like this. Okay. Um, so obviously the car is sort of just going along with the spline. So what we need to do is also keyframe the offset. So let's go forward to frame 100, just like we started. And we'll set the offset to zero because that's sort of the position that we want this car to live in, right? Um, and then if we go back to frame zero and we go to our side view, we got to move this back until it's basically in the same position that we started in. Um, so if you look at that, it's it's got, you know, the, this uh, last frame, it's got, you know, this bumper is sort of overshooting the Y axis just a little bit. So we want that same position and you can kind of go uh, just using these f uh, skip forward and back uh, buttons down here. You can kind of see where we're at. So it looks like it's jumping a little bit forward at the last keyframe. So we want to, I think the number that this actually was, was like 66.67. And if we keyframe that and then jump to the end, it looks like it's right about in the exact same position. Um, and then if you remember, we also have to make this keyframe for the offset a linear keyframe. So now that's basically the, the main part of the animation. So if you look at that, um, what we've got is basically this. We can hide that spline a little bit. So very cool, just nice smooth uh, motion. Uh, you'll notice the tires and the wheels are not spinning, so we're going to have to go ahead and do that now. So um, we've got wheels back and wheels front, um, and if we just turn off the spline wrap for a second, we can kind of see these. These already have their uh, axis points right in the center, so we can just kind of rotate uh, those. So we'll start at frame zero, and it looks like it's going to be the banking rotation, so we're going to set a keyframe uh, for that, at, for both of those objects at frame zero, and then move forward to frame 100 and we want them to go negative so that they spin forward. So we're gonna go negative 720, so two revolutions. You basically want those to, whatever this number is, it, it needs to be a multiple of 360 so that it, it ends in the same spot that it starts, as you can see. So it's actually moving, but it ends up in the same spot. Um, and then if you go into the F curve once more and grab both of those objects, you'll see the curve needs to be linear as well. So now if we turn back on the spline wrap, you will see we have tires rotating, car is wiggling and waving, and it looks really cool. So that's basically the um, most of the animation. I'm gonna real quick uh, model the, uh, the, the little extruded road that, we, that we're gonna have the car sitting on top of. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna just call this car deformation spline. And then we're gonna duplicate that so that we can keep the settings on this exactly the same. We're gonna show this one. And um, I basically want to uh, extend this out. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call this road spline. And we wanna keep the keyframes in there, uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and add a couple more uh, iterations of this curve so that we just got a nice long uh, road here. Maybe even a few more, yeah, that's good. And then if we just put this into, uh, let's, without actually, yeah, just throw down an extrude so it's at zero, 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 um, and then throw that in there. And then you see we've got a tiny little road, so we need to move this over um, on the Z. Let's do 130, and then we want to extrude it outward uh, two times 130, so 260. Oh. Let's go to negative 260. So now we've got the car sitting right on top of this. Um, and then so what I'm actually gonna do is, just for uh, to make this easy, I'm going to make this editable. So you just hit C, rename this road. Um, now we can extrude these polygons down and just create a nice like curve platform. So uh, grabbing in the polygon selection, grab all the polygons, just hit control A, and then I, uh, if you want to extrude, just hold M and then T, and that will extrude, and we actually want to, oh, we want to extrude down, but you see we lost our caps, so in the extrude tool, just check create caps, 
and extrude this down. And then um, you could just move it down, but I like to flatten out the bottom. So just scale on the Y axis to, z uh, to zero. And then we can just drag this down. So it's pretty much out of frame. Um, and now you'll notice one thing um, is we lost our animation. So this car is sort of just moving along uh, nothing. The, the roadway isn't moving. So there's two ways we could do this. We could either, there's a few ways you could do it. Just copy the track of the x-axis and paste it into here in the road and then it'll move along. Or you could simply just put the road underneath the car deformation spline and it'll move along with it. Uh, but for me, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and keyframe. So I'm just gonna go ahead and animation paste track in there and that should move along properly. So now we've got um, this nice looping animation that just kind of keeps going. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of a bevel to this road. So under uh, the deformers, I'm gonna just hold shift uh, with the road selected and add a bevel. And then I'm gonna use uh, angle 40 degrees, increase this bevel to like something like seven and give it some segments there. So nice curved bevel. Um, let's decrease the size a little bit. Okay, great. So um, next we're gonna go over a quick lighting and texturing of the car and just trying to get this finalized and ready for your daily render on Instagram. Okay, so uh, first I'm gonna create a camera and I'm gonna jump into that camera. I'm gonna change the, uh, the width and height to 1280 by 1280 so it's a square. Um, I'm gonna zoom out pretty far, centering up the car uh, with that center dot and then just drag these handles in until you get a nice sort of like isometric look. Uh, that's kind of what I did for the original. Um, another thing I like to do uh, is hold Shift V and then go to View and turn up the border opacity just so we can kind of focus on uh, what our final frame is gonna look like. So if we look at that, this is kind of what we've got. Um, and in the original, I think I did a slight uh, camera keyframe on the, uh, the um, rotation. So if we start here at zero um, and then move to the middle at frame 50, I think I just went up a tiny bit, maybe not even that much, maybe 19.5 or 19.7, and then go to um, the, copy that value from the beginning and paste it in at the end. And so now we've got just this very subtle camera movement that sort of follows the car and keeps it centered in the frame. All right, cool. So I'm gonna find a frame that I like for the lighting um, just so that we can use, uh, we can see how the lights are gonna look. And let's go ahead and jump over to Octane and we can texture and light this thing. Okay, so first things first, let's change the uh, render mode to path tracing. Um, I like to go into the Octane settings, change the samples down to like 150 and go to the GI clamp and set that to one so that we don't get any uh, fireflies or anything. Okay, so I'm gonna put an Octane light in here, um, but before I actually mess with the lighting, I'm just gonna put a single material on the, the, the null that the car is in just so I can see kind of like the reflections, um, uh, how that's looking. So let's turn that light on and move it up and then let's rotate it 90 degrees. Um, we want this to be sort of like that nice like car reflection uh, that you can see right there. Maybe it doesn't uh, need to be quite so powerful. So um, we can turn that down in the Octane light settings, you know, just get something like that. Um, and then what I like to do when I'm doing lighting is, is jump to the four views and just go to any one of these views and change the camera mode to perspective so that we can kind of see without changing our camera view in the, in the Octane viewer, we can kind of see how it's looking. Um, so maybe bigger 
rotate it. Just kind of figure out what looks best with whatever object um, you're using, because obviously everybody will probably use this technique for different objects and things. So just figure out what works best for you. I think that looks pretty good for me. And then um, holding the, uh, the car model, I'm gonna grab a targeted area light, which will keep it targeted at the car. And I'm just going to, oops, I'm going to move this sort of behind to give it a nice highlight back here. Um, maybe scale it up, move it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. And then let's turn this way down. So it's just a little, little highlight back there. Okay, um, so now let's just do a quick texturing of this and uh, we will be done. It's pretty simple. I've got the, the car here and it's got the car body and it's got some selection tags. Um, if you want to, we can turn off the, uh, the spline wrap and the road for now, just so that we can kind of see um, what these texture tags are assigned to. Um, or these selection tags rather. So let's do that for now. So this one is the chrome, so let's make a chrome material. Um, the way you do this is set the diffuse color to black, turn up the index of refraction to something like that. Maybe give it a little bit of roughness so it's not perfect. Um, and then we'll drag that onto the parts of the car that are chrome. Um, and then, oh, first I guess we need to make the car paint. So let's go ahead and do that with this material we've already created. Um, let's just take that off for now. So car paint, uh, it has like a darker base color usually. So let's do something like, um, let's do something like a, uh, like a, let's do orange. Yeah, that might be, or let's do a red, no, like the reference I sent. So kind of make this a little darker and pretty saturated. And then we'll go into the specular. Um, and actually, instead of having this as pure white, we'll make it sort of like an off red color, which will give us a really nice uh, sort of reddish tint to all the reflections. We could even go a little stronger with that. And then we can bump up the index of refraction to like 1.6 so it's extra shiny. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe even bring the diffuse down just a bit and the specular um, up. Yeah. So something like that works pretty well. Um, next, let's grab the chrome selection. And actually, let's just focus up here real quick. Um, so we're gonna drag that chrome that we made onto that. Um, before all of the, I didn't actually do a, a selection tag for the body paint, so let's just drag that on and has no selection tag and we'll drag that to the, the first texture so that everything else kind of gets applied on top of it. Okay, um, next selection tag <clears throat> is the headlights. So um, we'll make a emission texture. So just grab a diffuse uh, texture and go into emission, black body emission, you know, change the temperature down a little bit. And then um, if we actually hide this, we can see what that's selecting. So select that, drag it on there. It's been applied. We won't see it um, until we actually make the headlights glass, which is in these parts. Let's actually just hide all the other parts of the car. So yeah, you can see that's emitting out of there. The next uh, part of the car is the tail light glass. So I'm just going to make a, a glass, a specular material and go into the uh, transmission. I'm just gonna make this like a red, so it looks something like that, maybe a little more, and put that on that. And then uh, for this, I actually also wanna turn on fake shadows, so it's got a little more shadow to it, or less shadows underneath. Okay, um, next we have the interior. So for this, I just made like a simple, you know, like a white or like tan. Let's do a tan, something like that. And then just turn the roughness up super high. Drag that on there. Nice little interior color. Um, undercarriage, this is um, just, I did, like I copied the car paint material and then I just made it like a dark, dark red uh, with a lot of roughness. Um, Cause you'll kind of see this in the, the, this part of the car. And then turn down the index of refraction. Okay, cool. Uh, maybe a little less in the roughness. Yeah, so something like that. 
Okay, so that's that part of the car textured. Um, then we're going to turn back on the glass parts. So for the glass parts, I've got two different textures. First one is the windows and these little front glass things. Uh, I don't know if that's correct, but I just did it anyway. So just make a regular specular material, throw it on there, and that's good to go. The other part is um, actually the headlights, which I wanted to have like this striped kind of uh, plastic material. So um, let's turn down the emission on this uh, headlight texture to like, Let's do like one for now, just so we can kind of see what this looks like. So you can see this headlight. Um, I'm gonna duplicate the specular material we did for the windows and go in here and add a, uh, this is just a quick way to do this, add a gradient, make it a linear gradient. Oops, I gotta plug it in uh, to the bump. So we've got this linear gradient um, and we wanna just scale it way down I guess we got, have to apply this to that. That makes sense. Um, and yeah, so scale this until you get these like stripes. So you see that and then you can rotate it 90 degrees. Oh, maybe it doesn't need to be quite so small. Yeah, so you know, this isn't super like detailed. It's just something like quick to kind of give it that effect since it's gonna be pretty far away. And then we can turn back up the uh, turn back up the light, and then uh, actually in this headlight uh, plastic material, I added a little bit of roughness as well, so it just kind of roughens up and spreads out that light. <clears throat> Let's turn down the light a little bit more, so maybe ten should be good. Okay, um, so that looks pretty good. Now we got the wheels, and the wheels are basically going to have the first texture applied to them is going to be chrome. And then we're just gonna make a quick tire texture that we'll use and apply to these selection tags. So let's just select both of these. Um, this is our tire. Make it like a dark gray and give it a bunch of roughness. Maybe even darker. And then we'll uh, apply that there. Cool. All right, so now we can turn back on our spline wrap and our camera, get back in there, and turn back on our road. And you see it's really coming together. Um, the next thing I did was uh, just did a quick uh, color, something, you know, you can pick whatever color, but something that matches the, you know, tones of the car. Um, maybe we'll go a little more red like that turn up the roughness maybe turn down the specular um, something like you know that or that might be maybe a little too saturated there yeah and you can just play around with this um, and then the last thing I did <clears throat> was actually add a uh, HDRI environment and in the, uh, the texture I just used like a standard HDRI that I use for a lot of stuff to give it some extra reflections um, and then you can you know bump up the brightness on that and then uh, for the colored background you could easily just throw a plane back there and apply a texture to it or you could just do a um, another texture environment and this would just be a solid color and then you'd set the type to visible so it's just visible so if you you know, you can adjust that how you want, but then you can just simply go in here and change the color to whatever, you know, you want, brighten it up. Um, and then if you, that's pretty much good for the texture and the lighting. And then if you add a uh, Octane camera tag on the camera, you can go in here, um, you know, turn on denoising and you could uh, adjust the curves a little bit, the gamma, brighten it up, um, add some, bloom to give it a little bit of overspill and then um, maybe go back in here give this a little more red in the background yeah and so that's pretty much it for the texturing and lighting um, this is super simple but you know I think it had a pretty cool result um, and yeah
thanks for checking it out. All right, well, that's it. Uh, like I said, super simple, doesn't, doesn't take too much, um, but you know, I thought it would be interesting to share. If you enjoyed it um, and you want to see more tutorials from me, uh, I would really appreciate if you'd subscribe. Um, and then if you have any ideas for tutorials, just hit me up and let me know. Uh, I'd love to do some more, but I'm trying to put out one per month. So uh, just stay tuned and I'll see you next time.